It's been less than two months since Ingham County Prosecutor Carol Seaman made the decision to change the way her office deals with the felony firearm charge. Seaman says it was all done to fix racial disparities in the law enforcement. But now she's facing some backlash from 22 elected officials. But it's men and women. It's black and white. It's Republicans and Democrats. It's rural and urban. It's, it's that document. The people on that document are literally a cross section of elected leaders in the county and who lives in this county. Ingham County Sheriff Scott Wigglesworth is pushing for Seaman to reconsider the change, making his case to local elected officials and collecting signatures. So my idea was to meet individually with the 23 elected leaders in the county, 16 township supervisors, five elected mayor and two village um, presidents to get their take on this policy. Um, I in no way intended that to mean that they were speaking on behalf of their boards or every resident that lives in the township, city, or village. It was just a way for me to gauge how the community felt about this. Michigan created the felony firearm charge in 1976 because of a rise in gun violence. It's essentially a penalty for carrying a gun while committing another crime. Whether you use the gun or not, it carries a two-year sentence. In August, SEMA announced that her office will no longer charge people with a felony firearm charge if they don't actually use a gun while committing a crime. Seaman says she's doing this to break down racial disparities in the law enforcement. In 2020, the prosecutor's office received a total of 205 felony firearm charges, and 80% of those people charged were black. Well, she put in her um, press release and continues to say that this is a race equity issue, not a gun violence issue. Well, we also know in this county that um, black and brown people are overrepresented on the victim side of gun violence. We've had five homicides since this, her policy was issued back on August 11th. Um, four of the five victims are black and brown. So I think that's a big concern, especially now with the significant gun violence that we have to tell people that um, that they won't be charged uh, for that offense, uh, regardless of the evidence, if they uh, uh, if they use a, a gun in a commission of a crime. Mayor Andy Shore was one of the 22 elected officials who signed the document. You've been pretty vocal about you know promoting diversity, equity, and inclusiveness. You even started a whole committee. What would you say to those people who may say, why would Mayor Shore go against this change if it's going to break down racial disparities in law enforcement? Well, I would say that uh, those folks should talk to the victims and the families. Um, I have had families come to me who, um, who are very upset with this blanket policy change because, um, because they have had family members who have been shot, who have been killed, and they are predominantly black and brown families. East Lansing Mayor Jesse Gregg was one of two elected officials who opted out of signing the document. Gregg says signing it will go against her mission to represent and support all residents in East Lansing. This is a change that we can make that we know will make a difference. Um, and so we owe it to our community in the spirit of fairness to try it essentially. Wigglesworth has given the document to Seaman to review, but as of right now, nothing has changed. I was at a meeting with her last week, actually, and she said that she's not going to apologize for what she's doing, and this is only the start. This is only beginning, and, and my response to that would be, I'm not going to apologize for trying the best I know how to keep the citizens of Ingham County safe. Now, I did reach out to Seaman, but she did not agree to an interview. However, she did tell me via email that her office is working hard to plan educational sessions for the elected officials to break down the data that shows racial disparities. For now, we're here in Lansing. I'm Larry Wallace, Fox 47 News.